Here we go, folks. We are ready to install the flywheel and start putting the ignition system back together. So in our box, we have these two longer flange bolts. They're with the spark plug, or they should be with the spark plug. We're not going to put the spark plug in yet. We've got to do some compression testing. And we're going to need this little key. And this little key, if I can get it out of there, is that little woodruff key. It looks like a little half moon shape. And if you didn't have this on for the last step, this flywheel nut will come off right now. That would have been in with that key. But let's talk flywheel. First of all, that key, I like to ro rotate the crankshaft so that key is facing up, facing me. So I can put that key in and gravity holds it into place. So there is that Woodruff key, it's called. I have my ignition. I'm going to put that off to the side for a minute. Flywheel nut. And I'm going to install the flywheel. That, magnet's, that magnet right there got me there. There's that uh, slot. That's the key way for that Woodruff key. I want to put the flywheel on, and I kind of rotate it until I feel it catch that keyway, and when I rotate, I see the end of the flywheel rotating. And that just hangs on there for right now. Now, on the back side of my flywheel cover, or fan, there are these three pins. Pin, pin, pin. They only go on one way. So if you put it on and you get one pin in, but the other pins don't seem to fit, like it kind of rocks a little bit, you need to rotate it. You need to find the right pins that go with the right way. Now I can get that tight. That feels pretty good. Then, last one is, there's a hole in this cover fan cover right here is a dot so I put the hole in the fan cover up with that dot and then I put the flywheel nut on I always like to take the 23 millimeter socket because my fingers don't fit down in there and again just get it started finger tight if it doesn't go on a long ways, you got to do that whole reverse it, back it out until you feel a click trick. And this is how that flywheel goes back together. Now again, this has a tightening to it, a specific tightening. But when we go to try to torque it, it just rotates the crankshaft. So this is another time that I use a torque wrench, or I, that I use the impact wrench. Make sure it's in forward. See what I got for, this one I'm gonna go on to number three actually. Tighten it up good. I'm gonna hold on to the flywheel, make sure to have my gloves on. Give it four good shots. And now I got the flywheel on. Here's the magnet. Right there's that blue magnet. Well, it's the magnet in the center of the blue. I'm going to rotate that straight away from where I'm putting the ignition coil back on. The ignition coil goes on these two studs here with these two flange bolts. This line goes up and behind. This line is going to be coming through and taking care of it. We're going to take care of this line with our insulator block on the carb. I'm going to start out by hand threading these in. Again, it's steel threading into aluminum, so we want to make sure to do it finger tight. And 
And I apologize in the manual. It is chapter 9. And it shows all that information. And I'm just checking my spec. So if I take a look in chapter 9, it says ignition coil air gap. So I have it turned away from the magnet, but the gap between that ignition coil and this flywheel is an important gap. The ignition coil air gap says 0.01 to 0.02 inches, or 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters. This is when we use the really long feeler gauge. So we can get on both ends of that. We're going to push it tight, and we're going to tighten that ignition coil up just with the screwdriver, and then we'll torque it when we're all done. So if I take a peek here, so I'm going to take and I'm going to push that tight with that feeler gauge, 0.01 to 0.02 inches or 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters. I'm going to use that screwdriver with that 10 millimeter thread on there or 10 millimeter socket on there. Pulling this out. And again, I'm looking for 0.01 to 0.02, or a 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters. So halfway between 0.2 and 0.6 is 0.4. So I'm at point. 1.6 or 0.04 millimeters. Pull the ignition coil back, slide it through. And this one here, you got to kind of finagle it to get it around that curve. Put the end of that in. Now you can see the feeler gauge is all the way through. And again, it's good to have friends, good to have partners. Me not having a friend or a partner, this is kind of a pain. And I'm going to push tight. So I got the ignition going all the way through there. Tighten up. I'm pushing with this thumb real tight against there. That's what's holding this right now. And that's a six millimeter flange bolt. It doesn't tell me the spec for that. So I have to go into the area that tells me standard torques in the manual. So I'm looking up standard torques. That's in the specification section. And it's a six millimeter flange. So I'm looking, that's nine foot pounds. So we're gonna go 
nine foot pounds of torque on these two, which nine times 12, so 10 times 12 is 120, minus 12 is 100, and eight, so we're gonna go nine and take 10 off that, so we're gonna go 98 foot pounds of torque. So I'm at 80 right there. So I'm going to go 98 foot pounds of torque. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Standard torque value, 98. Just come back, double check that. This one, if you don't torque, all of a sudden when you're going to start the engine, you're going to pull it. It falls in and it makes a big thump. Ooh, that was an interesting noise. These here, to get them to all fall back in place, I always hang them all straight down and I try to use gravity to kind of get on the sides and then I can close it. Once I close it, tighten this up good, that little nut. And that's how you set the ignition coil. We're going to come up, route this cord through these two little pins up here. And your high tension coat cable is just gonna sit alongside here. And while we're at it, we can plug in the oil cable. Yellow to yellow. 